Well, welcome to the Mendota Ranch. Last week I promised you I'd give you a little tour of my Hummers. So these are military Hummers. So um, we use them on the ranch for ranch pickups. I know y'all see me in, uh, in my Dodge pickup all the time. And the main, main reason why is because it's quiet. You get in these things, they're really loud and you really don't have any audio um, in them. And then also if you got kids in there, these little doors are pretty flimsy. So I want to just kind of, if you're, if you're a rancher or you want, you think you've been looking at these, um, I want to just kind of tell you where I get them and how I get them. So I bought these off of what's called Gov Planet. You can go to, to uh, govplanet.com and they sell military equipment every Wednesday. And I bought three of these. I've got, I've got another one in the barn there. Um, I can't remember it was five or six years ago. I mean, I've I've had these things a long time. Before I had these, I had Pinsgar's. I don't know if you know what a Pinsgar is. It's a Swiss Army truck. It's got six wheels, and they were pretty good, but these, these Hummers are way better. Um, pretty much how they come, with it, it's going to come kind of like this without the doors. They're going to come with a four-door system on them. The seats are usually pretty crappy. At least the ones I buy, the seats are really crappy. Um, but Gov Planet, they tell you everything about the unit. They'll tell you, you know, all about, you know, how much oil is burning or if it starts, if it runs. So the ones I buy, I buy them, like say they're missing the windshield, the batteries are dead, they don't have any doors, and the seats are gone. That's what I get, because then I can put doors on them and batteries, and it saves me a ton of money. Um, so pretty much... Um, what we, we'll do is when we get them, we strip them down, put seats on them. Uh, tires, I bought my tires in bulk, so I found a guy that had about 15 or 20 of these tires, and I bought all of them. And now when these tires come, they come with what's called a run flat. So a run flat is another little piece of plastic inside. I don't know why they call them a run flat, because you go about from here to the barn there, and and your tires just shredded so we jerk all the run flats out these wheels these are split split rims so that actually just to change the tire you just undo the wheels i mean it it however long it takes you to undo them bolts is how long it takes you to do it so they're it's pretty simple to change we don't ever carry spare on these things because truthfully these tires we rarely ever uh pop a tire these are these are really some pretty good tires now the motor, they come with a diesel motor. It's a, this one's got the 6.4, that one's got the 6.2 uh, diesel motor, and I think it's an Allison transmission. And so we run farm diesel in them, but the 6.2, 6.4, remember those Chevrolet Suburban, Chevrolet pickups uh, back in the 90s had the diesels in them? That's the same motor, no turbo. Um, they get great fuel mileage. I mean, really, really good fuel mileage. Like these things don't carry but about 20 gallons of diesel. So I put 20 gallons of off-road diesel in them. And like this one here, I drive about every day. I'll drive it a month without filling it up. I mean, it really gets good mileage. The uh, the speed and the, and the power on them is, is kind of, you know, from zero to 35, 40 miles an hour, which is about all we go on the ranch. It's pretty good. I mean, it's got plenty of power to do all that, to pull a horse trailer and all that. But you get on the highway, it's a, it's a little sketchy. Um, these are for off-road use only. They, uh, I, now, I don't know if somebody's just filling me full of crap, but I think you can get them street legal. And, and here's, don't, don't take, I mean, don't write this down, but this is what I was told. If you have one pre-airbag, so like this is this is a 94 model, so it'd be pre-airbag, and you take it in and you pay the taxes on what it costs in 1994. And when you buy these, they'll come with a sticker and you'll have a price tag on there of what it costs in 1994. And I, like these are like $43,000 or something like that. Or maybe it's 64000 It was a bunch. So if you pay the taxes on that when it was new, so if your sales tax or whatever it is, 6% times, times your uh, $60,000, if you pay all that, then somehow you can get these street legals, what I was told. Now, I, I would never do that, um, but 
I guess maybe some of them, if they got a title from another state, maybe the, maybe that title will transfer over uh, into Texas. But for me, we you know we never see pavement out here anyways. So uh, so what we do, how we equip them? Like I say, they come in, we get doors on them, we get seats on them. I put a gooseneck ball in the back, so um, we can hook up to a horse trailer or a hay trailer or whatever we gotta do because we pull a lot of goosenecks. We put a hitch on the back to pull uh, horse trailers. Um, now this pickup, this Hummer here would be what we what you'd call one of our feed trucks. So this is one of the cake feeders here, um, 1,500 pound cake feeder. And what we do to it is I take I take the the four door off of it, okay? And I buy a two door cab. So this is just a two door cab. It's not very expensive, you know, four or five hundred dollars. It comes with two doors and a cab and it, it kind of fits. So I get all that. And so then this right this toolbox you're looking at right here, we build this toolbox. Or I say we do, I got a buddy in town, Westbrooks, so they build me this toolbox. The toolbox sits down inside where the back seat is. So this this is the back, if you look at that one, this is the back door, back seat, okay? So we jerk all that out, put a toolbox in there, and then that gives us a flatbed all the way across. And then I mount my, this is a 1,500 pound cake feeder that we mount on there. So we mount, uh, mount it just straight across bed to bed. And so the toolbox has to be pretty strong to hold it all up. And that's how we, um, that's how we equip it. And this, like I said, this, this is our feed, one of our feed pickups that we feed every day with and it just takes an abuse it just gets a beating i mean it's i mean ranch hands abuse the crap out of stuff anyways but then you get cows and horses bouncing off these things um they last forever i mean like when we buy them so we buy them i buy them off gov planet i'd pay between you know eight and ten thousand dollars for mine the one i was buying the kind of the more beat up ones and they have 20 to 40,000 miles on them when I buy them. Um, so, the, so the thing about not having many miles on them is a lot of things are kind of dried out. So the things, the first things that's going to go is your half shafts. So you got half shafts on, on every wheel. You got a, you got a, 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 a an axle, and they call it a half shaft. And it's got a ball joint in there and a rubber boot. And that rubber boot is rotten and it gets that water and dirt in there because those U joints, that's the first thing to go. So get ready to go ahead and just change all them out. Normally, what we do is we get, in, we get one of these in, just go buy four half shafts and just have them sitting on the shelf. And whenever you pull your first one off, just go ahead and replace all of them. The hardest one to do is, is that one over there on the back because it's got a break on it. Other than that, all the rest of them are really, I mean, it'll take you 35, 40 minutes to change one of them out. So it's pretty simple. Everything on it is really, really simple. Um, like, like one thing that goes out, the glow plugs, it's called a smart start. It's a little computer. It's about seven, eight hundred dollars It's a pretty expensive little item, and that's what runs your glow plugs. And... You gotta, when you change it out, you just unplug it. Everything's plug and play. So it's like, if it says 17A, you plug 17A into 17A over here. So I mean, it's just it's made for an 18 year old boy in high school to, or college or in the military. You know, maybe he's out in the middle of the desert trying to fix his Hummer and that's what it's made for. I mean, everything's plug and play. Just pull it off, throw it away, put a new one in, match it up and go. The, uh, the, light, the, the headlights are terrible. Uh, they go out first second you get them so y'all replace the headlights uh, so I replaced a fuel pump and I replaced a uh, injection pump that's about it I mean we literally drive them every day for five or six years um, these are 90 this is this is both of these this is a 94 this one might be a 92 model and you can't find a pickup or, or you know anything for as tough as these things are. I saw on Gov Planet now a lot of them you're buying now are um, like 2007, 2010, so they're a lot newer and probably nicer. I don't know, um, I, and I think they got maybe a little bit more horsepower. These don't have much horsepower, but they're simple. I mean, I, that, that's what makes them. That's what makes them work is they're simple. 
um, you know, just a diesel motor, no, no turbo, just, just start up and go. Transmit the transmission is really good. I think it's an Allison transmission. These don't have park, so you put it in neutral, pull, pull the handbrake. The newer ones have got um, have got a park on them, but these, I mean, they're just simple. You uh, the heaters, the heaters. It doesn't have an air conditioner. I guess you can get them with air conditioner. The heater. Yeah, you're freezing to death. You better wear lots of clothes. The heater, the heater kind of keeps your toes kind of warm, but it's not very good heater. It says it's a a ton and a quarter truck. I don't. It's more like a three quarter ton. I mean, you put a big trailer on here, it squats it pretty good. It rides nice though. Like this one with the cake feeder on it, it's the best ride there is. I mean, you can just boogie through the pasture and just eat bumps up. Uh, the four wheel drive, of course, is out of this world. Deep snow, deep mud, deep water, nothing shuts them down. They're just unbelievable. I don't know that we've ever stuck one of these. If we have, I don't remember it. I mean, they're just, they're, they're really good rigs. And these big old tires on them ride nice. Of course, you can let some air out of the tires, but um, they don't come with keys, nothing like that. They got some fancy switches all over them that, um, you know, like, like the lights are all locked up. But, um, I mean, to start them, you just come in here and hit the hit the run hit the button, and it'll say wait to start. And then whenever you uh, get started, just starts right up. I mean, they all start that good. It's just if the glow, if the smart starts working and the glow plugs are working, then they start up and run like that. And I'm not kidding you. It's been doing that for six years, and we literally do not take care of them. I mean, we don't. We change the oil in them once a year, just whether we need to or not. Uh, just put diesel in them, change the air filter out, and the oil filter out once a year, and we just drive the crap out of them. And because I mean, for eighty-five hundred dollars, you can't buy a pickup. You go buy a pickup for forty thousand. You put a ranch hand in a pickup forty thousand, it'll be trashed in a year or two. And these things here, they can't trash them. Uh, everything the way it's made. I mean, horses hit it, horses bite it, cows hit it. They don't dent. They don't wrinkle. If we hadn't rolled one over yet, they're pretty, they're pretty low profile. But So um, a lot of people are going to be asking me about parts. And can you get parts? Are they hard? They're easy to get. There's uh, several companies online that you can go to to get get parts. They're not the cheapest in the world, but, yeah, you can get parts. I've Like the worst thing I've heard of, you know, I, I, I dabbled a little. I told you a little bit about the Smart Start. It's like $700, $800. A radiator seems to be uh, a buddy of mine had a radiator go out and he act like that was like six hundred dollars for a radiator so radiator might be expensive item okay so the Hummer anything military is gonna be 24 volts so 24 volts and then you've got a cake feeder that's 12 volts so do you need to change everything over well no so here's the way we do it. If you hook it up to one battery, you can run, run it off 12 volts, but then it just runs a, one battery down. So what we do is we hook a 12 volt starter uh, motor up to 24 volts, and it just runs twice as fast. And it, we had, we've been doing that for years and years and years. We hadn't torn one up yet. So uh, that's the best way we found it to do it, is um, anytime you get 24 volts, and you got 12 volt motor, you're golden. Just it just runs twice as fast. Um, then we got hay beds and we got other stuff that's 12 volts, and we just we just run them twice as fast. Because otherwise, you just run run a battery down. But yeah, I don't know. You know, they're pretty simple to work on too. I mean, we we never take them to town. We mainly fix about everything on these things. Just call and order the parts. Um, they're good ranch stuff, you know. And like us, we're a long way from pavement, so. This is kind of right up our alley. Well, I can't think of much anything else to tell you about these things other than we love them. Um, if you're interested in some of them, like I said, we went to Gov Planet is where we bought them. I know you can get them in different places too, but Gov Planet, we bought them offline. When I bought these, I had like a six week waiting period to make sure I wasn't a terrorist or something like that. I don't know if they're still doing that or not, but like I said, I bought these five or six years ago. Um, getting them licensed and legal, in Texas, I, it doesn't look like a good idea. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't buy one thinking you'll get legal. Maybe you could put a 
a tractor sign on the back of them. And truthfully, we treat them like a tractor. This is almost like a tractor. If they had hydraulics on them, I'd hook a plow to them. But they, um, yeah, drop me a comment. I'm sure I'm, there's something I'm missing here. But drop me a comment, and uh, I'll try to answer all your other questions on that. And, and hey, next week, so here's another deal. Speaking of vehicles, we're going to sell the van. That van that I spent all that money on fixing it up, well, we're going to sell it. So I want to... If you're interested in, in that and looking at how cool that thing is, oh, and I'm going to pay somebody maybe to drive it. So stay tuned for that. But anyways, thanks for following me. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for uh, all the great comments. See you.